So typically something's greatest strength is its greatest weakness. It's either, it could be personal, it could be a personal approach, it could be a movement, it could be a design. In my case, I'm gonna talk about software design or software architecture, and I'm gonna argue whatever the best thing about your architecture or design is gonna turn out to be its greatest weakness. Uh, maybe not during the period that you were intending to use it, but at some point that approach will become an approach that people don't wanna use anymore. And so I'm just, you know, I went and found some pithy sayings, right? So uh, to my mind, anytime we make a design decision in software architecture or in other types of programs, uh, that blade cuts both ways, right? Like whatever it was trying to slice up to make your job easier, it turns out uh, that it's gonna make some other thing harder, create some other leak, create some other thing. And I think the thing that should be obvious to anybody that stays in the software industry um, actually, people management's a little bit the same way. There's a lot of these where today's pattern is tomorrow's anti-pattern. I mean, I feel like it should be its own talk. Um, and, you know, your successors will toss the design that you are proud of for the very same reasons that you made it. It'll be like, oh, that's too complicated. That's this, that's that. And so what we do is we make a decision within the moment with a little bit of lead time. Like we wanted, we can do a little bit of future proofing. But in the end, whatever turned out to be the main pluses of what we did will probably at some point become the main minuses of that approach. So in this case, I'm gonna do software sizing example, and this is gonna be monolith versus microservices. Now there are a whole range of monolith versus microservices discussions. There's many services. Microservices are all the rage and there's some amazing things about them, but it turns out there's some things depending on the organization, right? Like the, pick, the approach that you pick, the design and the architecture you pick, in some ways depends on your organization's capabilities and maybe not today's capabilities, but your target capabilities. So I'm gonna pick the monolith first. Man, monolith is truly hated, but I gotta tell you, there are some times the monolith did work really well, right? Um, it's a single deployable, that is a plus. You just wanna deploy one thing, man, you want to run it on your developer laptop, developer machine, or you want to stand it up on a new server. Um, now, it turns out this isn't totally true because there's a lot of side configuration, but a single deliverable has a single set of configuration. And the con is it's a single de deployable, right? If you need to update the monolith, you, it's easy. You just redeploy the monolith. It's not up easy because you got to redeploy the entire monolith, this entire single piece of large software, and that means you're down. And so you tend to have very large releases because you're gonna take the system down for something, right? Um, another advantage, single database. Man, single database is great. You can join to anything. You can get access to any data. You can do any kind of transaction semantics you want. The downside is it's a single database. You're limited by the database side. You're limited by the database throughput. Um, you can have people do all kinds of complex wiring in the database you kind of wish they didn't do in their queries, right? And so you have scaling issues in that database and data replication issues, right? Um, you know, it's an, like I said before, it's an easier developer experience in a lot of ways. I worked on one, we had a million lines of code. We just deployed it on our laptop, on our desktops at that time, right? And it was super easy. Um, the problem was we need pretty big laptops, pretty big machines to go deploy this monolith. And it took a while. Um, and I'll describe the counter approach to this and where that's a problem. Um, a, a monolith was actually manually deployable in a lot of ways. Um, and so, you know, if you didn't have a lot of automation, you could still deploy this thing and it was only one major component or a couple major components. So, you know, in theory, you could trade people how to do that. And the downside is a lot of these monoliths they actually turned out their deployments were really complicated because everything was all wired together. And so, uh, you know, the monoliths tend to be manual. Although the one I worked on where we had over a million lines of code in a single deployable was completely automated. So I don't know why I put that in there, but you get the idea. And then a uh, nice thing with the single database, I think I talked about it before, it's easy to do an immediately consistent transaction. You have people and training and certifications and a bunch of other stuff that's got to be updated as the data is entered. Um, you know that when that transaction completes, the data across all domains is immediately consistent. And the downside of that, you traded that immediately consistency where you never had out of consistent data, right? Confusing data. Um, and it turns out that isn't completely true, but you were able to reduce it, was you ended up with pretty complicated transactions. Uh, I was working on a system oh, just a little ways back. It was a monolith. There were some actually things that were okay about it, although it got a bad name because it was a monolith. Um, 
And we had 600,000 lines of stored procs in it. And so that turned out that our transactions were super complicated. Now, that was an implementation detail we probably could have fixed, but it made it where you could do fairly large commits and be comfortable that when that was committed, that your data actually looked correct. Um, logging and tracing and correlation. I might actually argue that the monolith makes that easier. All the transactions, all the workflow, like you can have internal services. You don't end up calling out, you have internal services. And those internal service calls are all easily traceable. They happen in the same logs. They happen in the same trace database. They, sometimes they happen in the same threads or group of threads, thread groups, right? And so that correlation is easy, really. And then if you're in a developer machine, you can just hit a breakpoint and you stop the entire application while you're trying to figure out what's happening, right? Uh, the downside of that is um, you can get pretty high volumes on few nodes or on few. So you can have scaling issues on the logs and trace volumes. Um, I'm not, I, I kind of reached for that one. That I actually feel like that's one where the monolith actually has a monster advantage over other approaches. Well, a big advantage. Um, and then scaling a monolith is easy, right? You just buy a bigger machine. Or if you're set up to be clustered, you buy a couple bigger machines. Really not very complicated. Um, the cons are your scale up is limited because you have to scale everything. You can't scale a component. You can't be like, I've got these 20 pieces and we're just gonna scale them up independently of each other. And so you're kind of limited. A lot of times they tend to top out. Although the reality is you can build a really big monolithic system. Um, but you can't scale out very easily typically. And uh, they tend to be written to be a single deployable. And so that's a limit. Um, software microservices. These are the, were the hot ticket uh, a few years ago. They're still the hot ticket. Um, I think they're this year's religion. Um, so the pros are simpler deployables. Super simple, right? You got a bunch of microservices to deploy. Um, they all deploy the same. And the downside is you can end up with a lot of deployables. I work in a system now. We've got uh, it's a small system. We've got 20 deployable components because every service is isolated. And so we have to track those 20 things when we deploy to see what happened. Uh, the big pro of microservice, you can isolate the data model, is the theory is that you isolate the data model. So you isolate, you get isolation. And so the pieces don't interfere with each other. Uh, the downside is joining data when you want to build a larger document. So if I have people and um, training and certifications, in different databases. I have a training database and a people database and I have certification database, right? Uh, if I need to build a unified view of that, I actually got to do multiple calls. And so the good news is I can maybe, and in some cases that works for you and in other cases it doesn't. Uh, there's smaller database commits. You get like these rapid fire small commits. Uh, the downside is actually it turns out a lot of things you do on the front end or at the top of the business model will now involve multiple service calls in multiple databases, which means you have multi-phase commit you don't have any transaction semantics, so you're going to have data that is only partially correct a good portion of the time. <clears throat> While it's in flight in particular, but if there are errors in some of the later phases, a lot of systems just don't even know how to roll back, and you can end up with these weird inconsistencies. Um, in the pros of the microservice, you have fewer dependency conflicts with a macro monster service. If you try and update underlying libraries, you have this Mongo, not Mongo, you have this uh, monolithic service that you're trying to do dependency upgrades on, it's a nightmare. Um, uh, the cons are, of course, you end up with those same dependencies. They're simpler because each service only manages the one that belonged to it, uh, but you get dependency drift, right? And so you can have defective or bug-ridden um, security uh, risky libraries and different dependencies. You got to bring them all up independent of each other, and that comes with its own overhead. Um, the good news is you can have a function for service. The bad news, so they're all isolated, tiny pieces of functionality that are easy to test. And the con of that is you end up with a bunch of network calls, a lot of overhead. You got to do all this error handling that you didn't have to do before. So you end up with this complexity. Um, in microservices, uh, the simple error tracking, because you only got this little service, so you do an in and an out and you're good. But it turns out you have these complex network errors because you got all these services that in the real app have to be orchestrated. And so you end up with problems with that. Um, the a pro is on the services, they get independent versioning. So you can version those services independently and release them at will. That's also turns out to be a con. You end up independently versioning those. And now you got to figure out which versions work with each other. With the monolith, it is never in doubt which versions work with each other. But in a bunch of microservices, 
if they're all re releasing at independent late rates, you don't necessarily know what the test matrix looks like for that. And you end up with something that can be pretty complicated. So microservices, developer experience can be bad. Uh, you know, it really, that's the way it is. What I'm gonna argue here is you're gonna fit, are you gonna fit the org to the approach you're taking? Or are you gonna fit the approach to the org? Um, you gotta pick which design works for you based on your technical issues and your organizational structure. And you should not use another group's success as an indicator of your what you're going to get out of that same design. Have a great day.